The Wheel of Time, Episode 5, takes place one month after Episode 4. Rand and Matt got to Tarvalon first. Then Nynaeve arrived with the group of Aes Sedai who have the false dragon, Loghain Ablar. Last but not least, Perrin and Egwene got within sight of the White Tower. They were captured by Eamon Valda, but with the help of the wolves, they escaped. So everybody is pretty close together now, and of course, the episode began with Karene Nagashi's funeral, and it ended with Aurora Steppen's funeral. In this video, I will add color to a few scenes so as to explain what is really happening in cases that are not too spoilery. I will also highlight other important lines that you should keep on your radar without going into them in detail so as to not spoil their eventual payoffs. Let's start by looking at Perrin and Egwene. Isla, Rain, and the rest of the Tuatha'an tried to protect Perrin and Egwene, but they got beat down for their efforts. Aram led Perrin and Egwene off to a village, but unfortunately, Aram was run down, and Perrin and Egwene were captured. Somehow, Eamon Valda got inside information because he knows that Egwene can channel. That might mean that someone has been following the group out of the two rivers. This guy is the prime suspect. As a reminder, Padon Fane is the peddler who arrived to the two rivers in episode one. When the Trollocs attacked, he didn't seem very scared. It's worth noting that when he first arrived, he was whistling a very specific tune. Fast forward to Shatter Logoth, and right before Matt was lured to the dagger, you could hear that exact same tune. So Pod and Fane was following them. Now he is at Tarvalon, and there's a chance that Pod and Fane told Eamon Valda that Egwene could channel. So Eamon Valda began to torture Perrin in front of Egwene so that she would confess to being able to touch the One Power. Then he gave them some time to talk. Perrin admitted to Egwene that he had killed his wife, Layla. So the next time Eamon began to torture Perrin, Egwene had had enough. She channeled and threw a pathetic little ball of fire at him. Or was it pathetic? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it worked as a distraction because Egwene also lit Perrin's ropes on fire, which allowed Perrin to break free. And the Perrin that broke free wasn't the blacksmith from the two rivers. It was Perrin Golden Eyes, a man who has a bond with wolves. Egwene grabbed the rings of the fallen Aes Sedai, and the wolves helped them escape. So Perrin and Egwene will probably meet up with their friends in the next episode. And before we move on, notice how one of the wolves jumped up, or rather, he flew. Odds are, this is a very important wolf named Hopper. Now let's look at Matt and Rand. When Matt and Rand approached Tarvalon, Rand noticed the mountain in the background and said that he thought he'd seen it before. Very strange. These two were the first to arrive to the island city of Tarvalon, where they saw new animals such as a camel and new food as well. Rand and Matt are from a small town, so they were shocked by the amount of buildings and people in the city. As a result, Rand threw out the show's first, Love and ashes. which is basically an in-world way of swearing. Just like Nynaeve, Rand does not trust Aes Sedai. So instead of going to the White Tower, he led them to an inn, which Tom Marilyn had told him about. Rand tried to reassure Matt that the Fade killed the farmers and their little girl, but technically, we don't know that for sure, and more importantly, Matt doesn't know that for sure. So Matt is broken by the possibility that he killed them. Rand left Matt and met an ogier named Loyal in the library. At first, Rand thought that the ogier was a Trolloc, since ogier are so big. But Ogiers are definitely not Trollocs. The Ogier are a peaceful race that have an affinity with nature. They also love history and knowledge, and for the most part, they live in places called Steadings. When Ogier are outside of Steadings too long, they suffer. They can even die. So it begs the question, how long has Loyal been outside the Steading? Loyal was very funny. Since Rand has red hair, Loyal falsely assumed that Rand was an Aeolman. Rand, of course, is from the Two Rivers, so he denied that, which made Loyal laugh. Loyal was excited to have met an Aeolman from the Two Rivers who insisted that he was not an Aeolman. And here's something pretty cool. When Rand met Loyal, he was holding a book written by the legendary adventurer Jane Farstrider. This is a world where some people live very long lives and a world of reincarnation. So one way or another, keep your eyes out for Jane Farstrider. Ogiers live very long lives, and because of that, Ogier consider humans to be hasty. Case in point, Rand heard that the Aes Sedai had arrived with the false dragon, and Loyal wanted to slowly gather up his books first. But Rand is a human, a hasty human, so Rand ran off and met Matt on the balcony. 
When Loghain was escorted past them, Loghain looked up and noticed them. There is a specific reason as to why he looked up to that balcony. Loghain has what's known as the talent, which is the ability to see Taviran. A Taviran is someone with whom the wheel shapes the pattern, basically the most influential people in the world. And as a reminder, Moiraine had heard rumors that there were four Taviran in the two rivers. Matt's condition has gotten much worse. He is being overcome with madness, and thus Matt asked Rand to promise him that he won't let him go mad like Loghain. Rand then asked Matt to promise him the same. Since the ogre named Loyal has access to the White Tower, he went there and found Nynaeve for Rand. As we saw in the last episode, Nynaeve is an incredible healer. Unfortunately, Matt snapped at her due to the madness. So for the time being, Nynaeve has not yet done anything to heal him. More on that to come. Outside of their room, Rand worried about Perrin and Egwene, but Nynaeve assured him that Egwene was still alive. And there's a reason that she knows this, or rather, that she can feel this. So Nynaeve told Rand a story about Egwene, how Egwene had breakbone fever when she was a kid. Nynaeve said that the wisdom did not know what to do, so basically, it is implied that Nynaeve unknowingly healed Egwene using the one power. And here is a minor spoiler. It won't ruin anything for you. Nynaeve probably does not realize this, but the reason that she could sense Egwene is still alive is because she healed Egwene using the one power. And when you do that to someone, you develop an affinity for that person. That affinity allows you to sense when that person is near. So again, Nynaeve probably does not realize this, but that is why she reassured Rand that Egwene is still alive, because Egwene is near. Okay, now let's look specifically at Nynaeve. Leandrin had approached Nynaeve back at camp, and she approached Nynaeve again in the White Tower. So Leandrin is trying to recruit Nynaeve to the Red Aja. Of course, there's a big problem with that. As Moraine pointed out, Nynaeve likes men. Since the Red Aja do not take on warders, Nynaeve probably won't choose the Red Aja. Moreover, Nynaeve is clearly a gifted healer. The Yellow Aja focus on healing, and thus, Moraine suspects that if Nynaeve were to become Aes Sedai, she may gravitate towards the Yellow Aja. There's one problem though. Nynaeve does not trust Aes Sedai, and Nynaeve does not want to become an Aes Sedai. All Nynaeve wants is for Perrin and Egwene to arrive, to heal Matt, and then regroup and figure out what the Emmonsfield Five should do next. Now let's look at the White Tower politics. Moraine has been out of the tower for two years, and presumably she will leave the tower again. That may cause issues. First off, if Nynaeve or Egwene were to stay at the White Tower, then someone like Leandrin could influence them. Speaking of Leandrin, Alana Sedai told Moiraine that Leandrin has gained a lot of support over the last couple years. Alana also warned Moiraine that the Amarlin seat is angry with her. This ties back to something that Stepan had said to Lan in episode 4. Stepan told Lan that the Amarlin seat has not grown any fonder of Moiraine. This is why Alana warned Moiraine that she has two powerful enemies at the White Tower, Leandrin and the Amarlin. The Amarlin is on her way back from the city of Camelin, so expect Moraine and her to reunite for the first time in a couple years. And remember, Aes Sedai cannot lie, but the truth that Aes Sedai tells you is not always the truth you think it is. Moreover, the conversation between Alana and Moraine inside the cave about Moraine's pet dog may take on new meaning in the next episode. So go re-watch that if you want, and try to figure out what they were really talking about. It very well may tie into this painting here. Last but not least, let's talk about Stepan. Stepan was bonded to Karene Nagashi, the green sister whom Loghain killed. When a warder or an Aes Sedai is injured, the other one feels their pain. And when one of them dies, it's not like losing a loved one. It's more than that. It's like losing a piece of your soul. Sometimes, warders will bond a new Aes Sedai. This can help the warder overcome the pain. That is why Alana offered to bond Stepan. Unfortunately, he did not do it. Instead, he chose to sheathe the dagger in his own body. He killed himself. But taking a step back, on their ride into Tarvalon, Lan told Moraine that Nynaeve was worried about Step. The show writers didn't have to include Nynaeve in that conversation, but it's awesome that they did, because that is Nynaeve's biggest strength and her core attribute. Nynaeve loves others. Or rather, Nynaeve hates to see others in pain. That's why Nynaeve is such a good healer. So Nynaeve worried for Stepan, and later, Nynaeve cried for Lan. Similarly, 
Maureen also cried for Lan, partially due to their water bond and partially because they're friends, they're family. Maureen loves Lan so much that she is now considering breaking her bond to him so as to proactively save him from the pain that Stepan felt. More to come on that. Okay, now we are briefly going to talk about the Forsaken. Lan came upon Stepan doing a ritual to ward off the Forsaken, specifically Ishamayel, the father of lies. So the show introduced Trollocs and Fades. Then they introduced Dana as a dark friend. But above all of them are 13 people known as the Forsaken. Very powerful channelers who have sided with the Dark One for reasons such as the promise of eternal life. The last dragon sealed the Forsaken away in a magical prison, so to say. But eternity is a long time. So keep your eyes out for the Forsaken because they are definitely lurking. Some fans aren't going to like the fact that Lan cries since Lan is described as stone in the books. But that is just his exterior. Lan is a very, very caring man. And he does feel lost, like any person with a heart. The saddest part is that Lan had planned on staying the night with Stepan, but Nynaeve had given Stepan medicine to help him sleep, and Stepan snuck it into Lan's drink instead. So Lan now blames himself for Stepan's death. The loss of Stepan hurt him, and as a result, he broke down. However, there is always another fight over the next horizon, and the last battle is coming. So say a prayer for the dead. Alem and Dragorin, and ride on.